driver, he threw his leg over the bike and, you know, it just says, good luck, you know, keep her, keep her steady. And he, he just turned around and he gave me this strange look and away he went and, you know, waited and waited and there's no sign of driver, you know, there's maybe four or five bikes. I heard the helicopter and I went out of the awning and looked across and I could see the helicopter hover and I thought, you know, something not right here. And the next thing, uh, Johnny Barton come down, the, he's the rider, like, liaison officer and he, he says you need to come with me. We start with news that Dungannon's Ryan Farquhar is quitting the sport following the death of his uncle and fellow racer Trevor Ferguson. One of our most successful ever road racers has decided to come out of retirement. Ryan Farquhar is one of Northern Ireland's most successful ever road racers. He's won more than 200 times. That's what I want to do. My wife is 100% behind me. I started to think to myself, I've got two young girls and you know, there's more to life than just you know, racing and I think I need to do other things with them. I had a really stressful 2013, you know, just running the team, you know, I had quite a few riders and between uh, bikes getting wrecked and you know, the pressure of dealing with a, a title sponsor and that, I just lost control and I was in deeper than ever. So once I got 2013 out of the way, thought to myself, well, the first thing I have to do, I have to, you know, I have to make a living. I thought the easiest thing for me to do is probably get back on a bike. It was like a weight lifted off my shoulders whenever Anne said, that's it, I'm not racing. And then it was just about a bit over a year later, and Ryan and sat me down and he says, now I've got something to ask you. Is it something I want to ask you or something I want to tell you? <laughs> uh, well, you I made out. Uh, no, well, I think you made out that it was something you wanted to ask me. But then it's like everything, you know, what do I do in that situation? Say, right, don't. At the end of the day, he's my husband, and whatever he decides to do, you know, I have to be there to support his decision. And it's our way of life. It's the way that money comes into our household, and you have all these things to think of. You know, I've decided that I'm going to get back on a bike. I'll only do six or eight meetings that I've still, uh, I can, you know, have a, a life outside a race. And get the gun sorted. You not get rid of that down here in Lungana, will you? Look at your man. Oh, the ice is cut out of him. It's not long for me to sing daily. <laughs> <laughs> The first time I met Jeremy would have been when the two of us went out to the ride Roger Winfield's bikes at Phillip Island. You know, he's been great for me and my sponsors and, you know, a bit of crack and I've, I've took him shooting, he has took me playing golf, you know, I've done loads of things together. Oh. Oh. He's very competitive in everything he does, you know, whether it's shooting or, or playing pool or playing golf. He, Jeremy's very competitive. I wouldn't say I'm not competitive, but... <laughs> McWilliams has competed at the top level as a short circuit With rider. almost 50 years of racing experience between them, Ryan Farquhar and Jeremy McWilliams still have the hunger to compete. Our whole careers, our careers were completely different. We were, you know, we were running side by side, he was rosing out his circuits. We didn't really didn't mix at all, you know, well, at the beginning, racers aren't the easiest to get on with, you know, they're, they're always thinking about number one, they're, they're alpha males, and, and alpha males, you know, don't normally sort of mix very well with other alpha males. It's not often you're up this time of the morning, Jeremy. No dirt right? Doesn't matter, Jeremy hurts himself because he does fuck all all the way. He just lies in the house watches TV and tweets. Everything we do is, is reaction time, you know, and, and 
I can't slow my reaction time down. I'm, I'm hitting it. As soon as I see it, I want to hit it. Whenever it comes to buying drink, he isn't as fast. <laughs> <laughs> He'll always try to weigh things up to suit himself. Yep. He is very good at shooting. He's very good at golf because he gives himself maximum handicap. He's very good at pool, particularly on his own pool table, because he plays by Ryan's rules and nobody else's rules. People watching the, the, this programme say we don't get on, but it's all a bit of banter, you know. He enjoys the crack. Uh, I really enjoy it, you know, so that's just the way it was. Whenever I go to build a complete new bike, you know, I just wheel in a bog standard road bike, it's a commuting bike. The first thing I do is just pull the bike to bits. I'm just left with a bare frame. There's a lot of stuff on that frame. There's brackets that we don't need. You know, cutting, grinding, welding. Starting to bolt on the parts that, you know, I've either had made or a buy from Kawasaki. And eventually we end up with a, a bike that's sitting ready to wheel, be wheeled onto the, the grid at the Northwest 200 or the Isle of Man TT or wherever. I get a buzz from taking on, uh, you know, the factory supported teams and that, you know, on, on what, you know, I, I used to call garden shed tuning. He's like a nutty professor, isn't he, up in his garage there? No education at all, really. I never, I never liked school. I didn't get on very well at school. I was looking to do motor vehicle studies, you know, and working uh, with cars and things, but the. The teacher that took that, you know, I tortured him for a few years and he wouldn't let me into the class, so I had to go and do cookery instead. Enjoy the side of it, you know, but uh, it's whenever you have too much, when you have a massive workload and a, you know, a, a very short space of time, that's whenever it gets stressful. The bikes weren't the best in 2014, you know, we had some issues. You know, we, we did discuss it, I told them they were shit. I think we lost out of it last year with no testing on it prior right. to the Northwest. Ah, there's no doubt about that, but but you know yourself, I'm just a one-man band, you know, trying to put five bikes together, but uh, we're well ahead of the game this year. So you, you're going to take the quickest one again? Uh-huh. Any track time prior to the road race season you know, was pretty important and you know it was very important for me because the you know John McGuinness and Connor Cummins going were, were two competitors of mine. You know, we've come here to try and win the team event and not the individual and that, that's 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 gonna be a real struggle. I'm not a short circuit racer, you know, I'm a road racer and there's no pressure in me here. You know, I'm just here really to get a, a few points. The top five riders in the team score points. You know, you could say it's half work, half holiday, where Jeremy, it's, it's nearly all work for him because the pressure's on him to score the maximum points to the British team. Quite a massive problem with the bikes uh, blowing oil out of the, the overflow. And the Aussies, they complained to the officials, so the scrutineers come and looked at the problem and that, so they, they put a, a stop on the all the bikes that were, were blowing oil out. I'm having a friggin' nightmare. I was getting on to the other riders, advisors, so they couldn't see where they're going. So we're, we're just improvising. It's like a couple of old Castle GTX bottles underneath as a secondary catch tank. And uh, hopefully they do the job for a race. We'll see you. This might cure it. Williams versus Cameron Donald, two legends head to head. It's McWilliams and Metcher now, oh, master yeah, and pupil from their world super sport days.
Williams wins oh. race two. What a turnaround. Well, I'm a bit happier now, as you can tell. <laughs> we took a bit of a hammer in the first one, but we're coming back, and they've got machine issues like, like we all have, so it could be anybody's yet. You always bring it down, don't you? Far, far. It's always my fault. You up for it tomorrow? The overall team score is only taken from the top ten scoring riders accumulatively. Right. Does that understand? Uh, easy? I didn't realise it was like that. Well, I'm going to write it down for you. <laughs> you At least now we know. So all as bright as you, Jeremy. I'm just a bricklayer from Morgan. <laughs> so we have a better chance. We have our best chance today because going into tomorrow we got more top ten, more top ten UK riders than they've got. What's your riders? Just run them off into the gravel. Not like you were trying to do to me this morning. Who? You. Fuck off. <laughs> Cheeky bastard. Yeah. So Robert fell up in front of the next thing and ran up the inside of me and lifted me right across. You want me to ride over the top of him? No, he's over the top of me. He's only the horse order than G, is that what you're talking yeah, about? Right yeah. Spot? yeah. I know there's oil on the circuit and Jeremy and uh, some of our lad went down. They almost went down and lost the front, you know, but all hot and heavy at the front. I did one on cola. Yes, but wow. More drama for McWilliams as he stopped. I did one on cola. Yes, but wow. I did one on cola. Try one more time, just one more time. Yeah, but wow. Grand Park Bar has been one of the most consistent performers so far. I was riding as well on a short circuit as so probably ever rode and I just kept chipping away. And that's a one, two, three from Australia. But if the UK all make it home, they should still be leading on points overall. You know, how it all just turns to shit, you know, the drum of a clutch. Just the clutches are crap in them and uh, we haven't been able to fix it because we never didn't get tested them before we came here. I knew going into the last round, one, that we're in a position to win the overall award. You know, we've never done that. The Aussies have never been beat before. And two, as in my realistic chance of uh, winning the, the, the Island Classic overall on the, on the points. Even if they have their best result, we, we could still win the overall, as long as we get five bikes to the finish. If we don't win this, guys, don't come back to the garage. <laughs> and his Team UK in pole position 23 points ahead. Oh, McWilliams makes a terrible start, really struggling with his clutch. The Australians absolutely dominating this race. The UK just need to get their top scorers home and they've got the team win wrapped up. In the individual competition, it's between Cummins and Farquhar now, and they're neck and neck here. And here come the British trio. Ryan Farquhar leads Connor Cummins and Jeremy Williams.
Jeremy's absolutely fucking wrong, isn't he? Well, <laughs> I, no, I, I reckon, you know, if anybody deserved to win it, it had to be one of ours, and no better man than you. So, you know, it's been a fantastic experience, you know, getting involved with all you guys coming out here, you showing us the ropes. You know, you've been doing this here for, what, about 40 years now? And 50, probably. Probably 50 years, you know, I'm just... I'm just an old retired road racer that'll come and kick your asses. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. It's, it's great going out there at that time in the year, but because you know I run my own team and I've it, it puts a massive uh, pressure on me to to get back, you know, to get stuck into the bikes in the workshop again. When things are at their peak, say I'm building two or three new super twins and maybe a super stock bike, hundreds of times it has been after midnight whenever I'm getting into bed. I'm very lucky if Karen because they haven't, I'm not very good at sending emails and things like that and every sponsor you deal with, you know, you have to email them asking for the sponsorship and then if it's a trade sponsor, you have to put in detail what you need from them. I suppose at the end of the day it's really our business, you know, I'm here to help him, you know, through the day with whatever bits and pieces that he needs done. It's between the two of us and anybody else that helps Ryan, you know, whenever he's at the race meetings, you know, you're depending on those folk, like whereas other big race teams employ guys to help, whereas we just don't have the money to do that. Whenever we are out at the likes of TT and Northwest competing against all these big teams, um, you know, we are so proud that Ryan has done so well competing against them and that's what it's been like for years. Um, he always said like we are sort of fur coat and no knickers and that's true. You know, it's not all about the money and the big teams and the budget that they have. Um, at the end of the day the business is all done on the track. It's hard running a team to that extent, you know, on a you know, on a, a limited budget. Every year, you know, going back 10 years maybe more. Once the last sticker is put on to the last bike, it's like Sunday lifts a massive weight off yeah. your shoulders. It's yeah. unreal, it's a weird feeling. And once that happens, well the bikes, they're either good enough to win or they're not. It's just get on the bikes now and see how, how you will go, you know, and it's as simple as that. Welcome to the Vauxhall International Northwest 200 for 2015. Here's event one of the Northwest 200, the Vauxhall International Northwest 200. The Northwest 200, you know, it's always a, you know, it's always a, a goal, you know, to get in the podium, you know, to get a win, you know, it's something really special. So it's wide open, but if you were betting, you'd put your money on Ryan Farquhar, would you not? You most certainly would, or certainly a KMR machine. There is uh, Jeremy McWilliams. It's, for me, it's just kind of a no-win situation, you know. Your next GP race, you should be able to come to Northwest and win. And when I don't, you know, they go, well, those road races are better than you. When the lights go out, this race is underway. Ryan Falker is in no mood to be messed about here today. Look at him. Ryan always goes from the beginning, and he's very quick off the grid. He, he, he gets away. It is still Ryan Farquhar out in front, reasonably comfortably in front. You know, when I started really putting my mind to it, I realised that I could catch him a wee bit in some places. Now that Williams is closing in, that is the closest we've seen. Charging down the inside, surely he's not going to get it stopped. I knew that if I was to beat him, I had to be in front of him. It must be Farquhar's race now. He wasn't having any of that, was he, into Metropole? And now he takes the checkered flag and that Williams is second. Ryan Farquhar takes his fifth win here at the Northwest 200. He's been coming here for 19 years. That has to be one of my best ever. A couple of years ago, I never ever dreamt I'd even be on the grid again, never mind sitting in the front row of the Northwest 200. And another one two for KMR Kawasaki, you know, it's just a fairy tale, really. The second race then on the Saturday, I knew Jeremy was up for it even more. You know, you, you can get close to the win in the first race, pressure's on for race two. So let me tell you about this one I got. When the lights go out, this race is on the way. Seven, Ryan Farquhar, but right in his wheel tracks is Jamie Hamilton. Here's him, but look at the slipstream, these two again, Jeremy McWilliams and uh, Christian Elkin. Towing right up on the back of Hamilton, looking for a way to get past him. That would put them four wide. It has put them How? four wide. That was so close. Cool. Got a 
keep up with this man. He's trying to keep up with Jeremy Mitt Williams, but he's going for... Oh, oh. Ryan Parker, oh, what was that? Oh, it was all over the place, sliding it into the corner. The two bikes they were that evenly matched. Whenever Jeremy was my slipstream, he was fit to maybe pass me in the brakes, and you know I'd do the same. These two are pulling away together, aren't they? It's been Williams and Farquhar. So we're that close to each other, you know, I'd look over at him and he was giving me the fingers. Oh my goodness, <laughs> it. What you what is it? I reckon that's last one home buys the beers, isn't it? That's <laughs> next uh, straight or whatever, I'd come out of his slipstream and I'd go to the right hand side of him and I'd give him the fingers and we're just looking over and laughing. I'd try to wind him up a wee bit when we're, we've got all that time slipstream is, is to break his concentration a wee bit. Whenever I come the last lap, he ran onto the, the dirty part of the track over the camber of the road and give it a handful and it went side roads. He's, oh, oh, he's oh, nearly threw himself out of the seat. I saw this and I thought, bloody hell, Jeremy, don't, don't be crashing that bike, you know, I need that for the for the TT for Lee Johnson. Uh, Jeremy McWilliams absolutely on the limit. So Ryan Farquhar's got a lot to do, but it's not going to happen. Jeremy McWilliams takes his second win here at the Northwest 200. Enjoy the, the banter that you get from the, you know, from the road racing fraternity here over that, but so it's kind of nice to, to, to stamp your authority on it and get a win, eh? Even, even after you know this length of time, it's still, you know, and I think that day it just annoys me so much. I started to think, you know, has something happened to the bike? That's why I kept, you know, beating myself up so much about it. But the the place they, you know, they took the bike and. Uh, you know, the, the bring scrutineers or whatever and to uh, make sure but the bike was 100%, you know, there was no mechanical failure. It's one of those things where we can't turn the clock back and we just have to move on with it. It's not that you don't care, really, you just try to, because that's what you do, you just try to blank it out. And, you know, there, 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 there's a time comes whenever you start thinking to yourself, you know, Maybe I shouldn't be doing this. You know, every rider thinks it's never going to happen to them, you know, but it's like I say, it's like a... It's like a, an addiction. It must be the adrenaline rush, you know, and the, the buzz you get from speed. You know, we get addicted to it, you know, just the same way a smoker gets addicted to nicotine. It would be great at times if you could get, you know, like a, a, a tablet, you know, to, to counteract that, you know, whatever it is in your system, to get it, you know, to get it away completely. But to, to be fair, like, I do love racing and that's how I make my few quid, you know, to try and, uh, you know, to try and put bread and butter in the table. So many p times you could go out and meet people and say, well, you get that man of yours off them bikes, he's going to get himself killed. And see, people don't think about what they're actually saying to you. If I was speaking to someone and their son was in the army or their, their husband was a policeman, I would never say anything like that to them. As for saying that, you know, the riders are selfish, you know, at the end of the day, Ryan is providing for me and the girls and himself. You know, it's, it's a dangerous sport that he does. But there's so many worse things. There's men out there that don't attempt to, to provide for their family at all. I just can't wait till the race was over and he comes back in. <laughs> and it's always been the same and that's just, it's never gonna be any different. He's been so successful. He's not a rider that crashes. You know, sometimes I just fear, will our luck run out? on the brakes into the Armoy village for the first time. Farquhar's lining up. Yeah, there he is, pulling out round the outside. 
I've broken a few bones of my ankle and a couple of bones in my hand, but, but apart from that, I've been very, very, very lucky, you know, for the, for the mileage that I've done. Farquhar, he's lining up McGee here by Gummy, isn't off quick through there onto the laggy down. Exactly the same move. He's got the power there. Lap record for Ryan, 1 minute 50.379. People out there probably think we're all mad, but when you ride a bike, it's capable of doing 200 plus mile an hour down a small country road with, you know, with no speed limit. You can go as quick as you want. It doesn't really get much better than that as far as the bullets goes, does it? No such problem for Ryan Farquhar. He exits the Bellini Cross in the final time. Little look over the left shoulder. Win number 12. Around Armoy, he's going to take the checkered cloth any moment now to take that win and that new lap record. I've asked all my sponsors along today, you know, just for a day's crack, you know, come and shoot a few players. So then tonight, you know, we'll go back to, to my bar, we'll have a big tea. He told me he can't head straight in front of the camera, so let's get the cameras back out again. <laughs> He couldn't let him get away with the street today, could we? Not on his own day. The best gun in the world and the best shells in the world is the drivers, the frogs. <laughs> For me, if you get to the end of the year and Ryan's got all the racing over him and he's well, that's a successful year in my eyes. Couldn't have done it without all the sponsors, you know, and everybody knows and all the helpers out there. Probably the, the the biggest one that needs the biggest thanks to all is my wife Kjarn, how she fucks up on me and the it up. And Jeremy as well, you know, even though he's a pain in the ass at times and he's took praise from the off in the Northwest again. Just want to say a big thank you and hopefully hopefully we can do it all again next year. Yeah. 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 Yeah.